15 minutes in, I feel like I'm being blasted out of my body and going into this state of merging with source, God. And I started to see my whole life collapsed into a time package. It was no longer a time stream or who I was now. I was perceiving my entire being and I just started bawling my eyes out with love and witnessing myself. That shattered everything I thought I knew about personal growth. Hello, you beautiful bluebirds, and welcome back to another episode of Deja Blue. I'm back in my regular uh, position in the house at the dining room table at our little makeshift podcast studio, and I love doing in-person uh, podcasts because it's it's way juicier and it's way more fun for me um, than doing it over Zoom. Even though Zoom is beautiful, and with coronavirus and everything that's happening, um, it's it's a beautiful way to be able to connect with people all around the world. However, I get to experience the juice of this fantastic woman in person and I am so excited to be able to even be soaking up your auric field. <laughs> this, <laughs> this woman is somebody from a personal lens is just somebody that has made a huge impact in my life not by necessarily doing anything but just by being in your essence. Somebody that has shone a really beautiful mirror and uh, reflected the potency of what is within me, of the way that you weave and the way that you create and the way that you interact with people and the way that you share online and the way that you are in devotion to understanding truth for yourself so that you can share that truth with others, the way that you activate people, the way that you work with your clients. I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to keep <laughs> keep playing smoke up your butt um, because I, I just love this woman. And I've also, um, my counterpart, little Snoopy Brown, is also ferociously licking her right now. So while I am also blowing smoke in your direction my dog is also um working at it uh, at the same time I'm receiving it all yeah, yeah just receive the love abundance baby <laughs> so today bluebirds uh, i am so honored and excited to introduce you hello and she is the one of the co-founders of awaken with an o like o2 like breath work kind yep. of style and this uh is really taking the world by storm you are really sitting and helping consciously breathe some very influential people in the world that are impacting many, many, many people. So you're really getting to the root of a place of, of influence to be able to support with this information, getting out there in a good way. Um, and you are also a guide and a mentor and intuitive. Uh, you also are a channel and you have connection with the star beings. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of wisdom comes through that uh, regards, as well as being a boss ass babe that is building a life of her dreams and in engineering her external reality from a place of peace and love. Thank you, Blue. Yeah. <laughs> Could I, I mean, I have a whole list. I've got a scroll of things that this woman. Um, Should we just make that the podcast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then that was it. Thanks for tuning in, Blue. <laughs> I'll listen to it. <laughs> it's your morning affirmation podcast. <laughs> um, and so I'm so, so grateful to introduce you to the Bluebirds. Hello, Weston. So good to be here. Oh, Thank you. Oh. Thanks everyone for being here, oh. for listening <laughs> <laughs> across the globe, across the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very excited for this conversation. Yeah. And um, I love also having this podcast in a way that it gives me an excuse to have this time. Because both of us sort of like, you know, doing a lot and, and building a lot and creating mm -hmm. a lot. It's sometimes quite challenging to find those days where we can actually be like, hey. Yeah. You have a body, you're not just a screen or an yeah. Instagram handle, but you are actually a human mm -hmm. that I am sitting with in person and being able to interact and share codes with. So I'm very, very grateful to, Same. to do this. And this is the ultimate sweet spot for us, I think, because when we hang out, we have such juicy conversations that every time I pretty much think this should be recorded. Oh, yeah. And also we get to hang out and have playtime, but it's also productive. So yeah. win, win, win across the board and... Yeah. I'm so excited for your questions and just to go there. Let's go. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. Well, okay. Let's start here. 
First and foremost, Lily, that's enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's really like, going to town. I don't know what you've got on your hands. Doing great. But she's really enjoying it. <laughs> Might be my, my Thank moisturizer. You. Thank you for your, your kisses. That's very kind. So let's start with the breath work because mm-hmm. currently I am in integration from, I did a, a podcast and a YouTube channel, a YouTube video on my time in Mexico and how I got blasted through the stratosphere and how profound and the downloads and the insights and, and all of these things. And yet people put a huge emphasis on integration and they're like, integration is equally, if not more important than the actual ceremony itself. And I a hundred percent, a hundred percent agree with that. Now, when it comes to integration and practical tools, breathwork is an amazing integration tool, Mm -hmm. not only for blasting to the stratosphere with plant medicines, Mm -hmm. but also just for everyday life and finding our balance amidst the chaos and specifically, you know, with everything that's been going on and the death and the rebirth process, not only in the collective, but within us as individuals, this is an amazing tool. So I would love to start off by hearing how did breathwork enter into your life in such a way that it made such an impact that you decided to devote your whole life towards being of service to it? Mm, yes, this is so important. So when I first came across breathwork, I had heard about it through various people in my circle who are, who were into personal growth. I was already probably about seven years solid deep into studying different modalities from energy medicine to coaching, sound healing, yoga, like all kinds of things, just studyaholic in it. And honestly, at that point, I kind of thought I knew what there was to know about up-leveling and becoming more conscious. So when I heard about breath work, I was interested, but more from a physiological standpoint, I thought, Mm -hmm. okay, maybe learning how to breathe better is going to help me with my meditation practice. It's going to open up my airways more, that kind of thing. But it did stay there. So It didn't feel like an urgent thing, but it was like, at some stage, I will go there. I will, I will explore that and learn. And then it was when I was in Bali, I saw this workshop that was posted on like an actual little poster, the old school marketing way, local workshop happening this afternoon. And it caught my eye and I was like, okay, this is the time I'm actually going to see what this whole breathwork thing is about. And for some reason, I felt like it was really important that Lucas went with me. So Lucas is my partner mm. for everyone wondering. Shout out Lucas mm. Mack. We love you. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I felt like it was really important that he come with me. And at the time he had been tattooing for, I don't know, at least 15 years. So he was deep in this career mm. as tattoo artist, musician, creative, like that was his thing. But he was into personal growth as well. So I'm like, you know what? I think it's really important that you come with me. I don't know why, but like, trust me, when I get an intuitive hit, usually something good comes of it. So he was super resistant. And I was like, look, I don't want to go alone. Like, I feel that this would be better if we go together. He was like, hella, I know how to breathe. Like, seriously, I'm (laughs) I'm good. (laughs) But I couldn't let it go. And so I was like, get on the fucking, can we swear? Let's go. It's, it's day up with podcast. We can do all of it. Right, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> so I'm like, get on the fucking bike. <laughs> we are going. Like, you have to come. Just listen to me. So he's like, fine, fine. All right. We get on the bike. We drive to this yoga studio. We go into this breathwork workshop. They didn't really tell us that much about what was going to happen. They're like, you know, how you breathe affects how you live. And it was quite general. But I was like, yeah, yeah, I can resonate with this. And then they said, okay, we're going to go into a breathwork experience. You know, you'll feel it for yourself and you'll know what this is all about by the way it feels. So I just went into it with an open mind thinking, okay, cool. Let's do some breathing. (laughs) Like you would if you were going to do a yoga class and do some nasal breathing or something. Mm -hmm. So we get in there into the practice, 15 minutes in, I feel like I'm being blasted out of my body And going into this state of merging with source, God, and I started to see my whole life collapsed into a time package. So it was no longer a time stream or who I was now. I was perceiving my entire being 
And I just started bawling my eyes out with love and witnessing myself and realizing all of the ways that I had undermined my power, my perfection, my beauty, my good intentions, like all the things. And I just felt immense compassion while also recognizing a truth beyond even the level of needing compassion because I knew why it all happened. So it was a trip. I remember my hands were clawed up. I call it the T-Rex hands now. (laughs) And I was like, what is going on? Like, (laughs) what is happening to me? And they hadn't spoken about the potential for the T-Rex to kick in. (laughs) And I'm, all of my shit was coming up around being weird, being the odd one out. Um, something's wrong with me. So it was perfect. You know, the fact that it wasn't communicated, it brought up all of my core wounds around being the odd one. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to push my hands to open up and being like, just, just, you know, be normal and don't draw attention to yourself. And then every time I would try to push, they'd just be like, boom, back. (laughs) And so it required the deepest level of surrender into the perception of God. Mm. I guess that's the best way to describe it. And when I finally just let that be the truth and just let it swirl through my entire being, like I was aware of this out of body level of vastness while simultaneously being aware of sensations and my humanity Mm. So it was both happening at the same time simultaneously. And then as I surrendered into it, my hands naturally opened up. I just felt the smile come over me, the deepest self-love. And I came out of that experience. I sat up and I looked over at Lucas, who was on a mat beside me, kind of like over. And we were just like, what the fuck was that? And so that shattered everything I thought I knew about personal growth because I realized that I had been operating up until that point very mentally in my personal growth, like affirmations, positive thinking. If, you, if you've if you got a bad attitude, shift your state, like override it. And I realized that I had been band-aiding over things and kind of love and lighting my way into being this woke person that I thought I should be and that I wanted to be as well. There's like innocence in that. And then in that breathwork session, it was just, it was about honesty. Like the body doesn't lie. And in that session, I realized that my body was still holding so much pain. And there was so much that even though I was able to be positive, I was skillful at it deep down underneath that band-aiding and, and coaching, the pain was still there and I, di- I hadn't known how to shift it. So I'd gone into coping. And what breath work taught me is that when you get into the body level and you really get into the subconscious, you don't have to operate with, with a, a coping approach anymore. Mm. You can actually alchemize it at the root mm. and rebirth yourself into complete embodied knowing of that greater truth of who you are. So your whole life completely changed from that breathwork experience. Completely. I like it. Also, I really like that you laid down the law with Lucas at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> like, no, you're fucking coming to this thing. Yes. Get on Shout the boat. Shout out to all the women out there who are like, the balls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 because essentially that, that, Breathwork then changed the course of your your life and your and your devotion, your commitment to your service to the world. Completely. So yeah. after that session, then and and the profanity of allowing yourself to feel all of it and then reclaiming your power back, as opposed to kind of love and lighting over it and then spiritually bypassing your experience. Um, then from that point, was it then just doing breathwork a lot, or were you doing it at home, or how did you start incorporating it into a way where it actually got to the point where you actually chose this as your avenue or one of your avenues of service. Mm. So what's interesting is I actually didn't do another breathwork session after that for a year, Mm. like one year close to the day. And it was because it was so powerful 
that I was scared to do it without the right facilitation. I know some people try breath work and then they're like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it myself. Like I, they're good to go. You know, they feel that inner confidence. But with the magnitude of the experience I had, I was not willing to play around with going into those realms without support. Mm-hmm. I guess it's a bit like plant medicine, you know? If you have a very, very powerful plant medicine experience, you know the art of facilitation around that space. So it was a year period where I went back to Australia and I integrated that session. And I think this is where the quantum field intelligence comes in. Like I say to clients, if you can only do one breathwork session, you're probably going to get a shitload more out of it than you would if you have the time and space to steadily build and do session after session. That doesn't mean that the sessions aren't going to be powerful when you stack them on top of each other. It's going to be exponentially more powerful. But I got hit with the the lightning bolt version, I think. So for that year following, I focused on the goal to study and yeah, one year close to the day, I ended up back in Bali and I went and started training as a facilitator with Lucas. So he actually left behind his career as a tattoo artist to pursue breath work. Wow. And I remember when we were going through our training, there was, we, we did like 30 days straight of breath work journeys, which is enough to turn your concept of reality inside out. Like it was completely transformational. It felt like turboing through, I don't know, 10, 15 years of therapy. It was intense. And there was this one session that we did where I had a vision of Lucas and I leading breathwork ceremonies, like huge experiences together. And I came out of it and I was like, oh, I've had this vision. I think you and I are going to work together. And he was like, no, no, we'll never work together. I'm going to do it in my way. You're going to do it in your way. And that's that. And then within probably six months, we partnered up. We were in business together. And now we travel the world and share and are like a dynamic duo. And look, you know, Look, I'm, I'm being a, a little, I'm highlighting and emphasizing here the times where I've, I've bossed out on him and been like, no, this is what we're doing. But Lucas is incredibly intuitive and <sighs> him and I are such a collaborative effort. And yeah, we're just getting warmed up. Mm. So as you move forward, what is your vision or your trajectory of what you want to create with how to bring uh, breath work to people. And when you share it, I want you to share it from the I am language as if it's already happening. Mm, I love this. <laughs> okay. Got to get a little, little shake. A little yeah. <laughs> get my cells alive for this one. <laughs> I am playing a vital and profound integral role in the awakening of humanity. Mm -hmm. I am supporting and guiding millions of people directly and indirectly to realize their own capacity to heal Mm -hmm. and love and forgive. And experience multidimensionality hmm. as a normal, everyday, deeply felt personal experience. And I am inspiring directly and indirectly the establishment of an entirely new level of consciousness that is based on love and peace. 
and compassion and inclusivity and open-mindedness, open-heartedness, magic, miracles and full power creativity. Yeah, I really like that. Try too. that at home, fam. Yeah, if you need to just like, oh, and here comes the seal of approval <laughs> from like, Lily. You should just lick I it will, up. I will them. join. <laughs> yeah, she's like, good job. I really believed it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this good. is beautiful. I mean, I, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, Snoopy. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, this is beautiful. I really was there, but, you know, it, it's happening. It's already out in the quantum. Um, so how often are you now incorporating breathwork into your everyday and how do you feel like an everyday practice of breathwork um, affects your, the way that you weave in this world, the way that you do everything outside of breathwork? How does it have a direct correlation? I'm doing breathwork every day. And I encourage anyone who is interested in the practice to make it a part of every day. It doesn't have to be long, like five minutes a day is enough. The core intention behind doing it every day is to connect to clear sight, to clear perception and to lead from that place. And I think the issue that is so prevalent in the world right now is that People are living in trance states. They're brainwashed. They're programmed into, and when I say there, I I mean myself as well. Like this is an ongoing process that we're all in as a collective of waking ourselves up out of these unhelpful trance states of doing things and knowing it's not good for us or knowing that Mm. it causes harm or knowing that it's not our highest potential of, ex- of expression, mm-hmm. but doing it anyway. And then drilling ourselves down, down, down into a hole of, of feeling unfulfilled. Mm. That's what I'm really committed to helping people to not do. And so the alternative is making a commitment every day to connect with your inner voice, your inner truth, your inner guidance is what we call it. So a part of this daily practice that we share is called Awaken Daily. And the end of it after the breath work is asking yourself, what does my inner guidance want me to know right now? Mm. And so when you connect into that, you make space for that. It inspires new ideas, new actions, new potentials. And then you go and take action on it Mm -hmm. in your life. And that's how we subtly and not so subtly shift the trajectory of not only an individual's life, but also everyone around them Mm -hmm. and that ripple effect, you know, it's exponential. Mm. It's so powerful. I see videos of you on Instagram and, and, um, you know, you're just sitting in, I think it actually happened this morning and you're just sitting in your chair, you know, with your cacao and like you're Mm -hmm. breathing. And it's, it's an amazing reminder for me of being like, okay, it's all right here. Everything that you could ever need, the, the, all this, this quantum computer that we have been given, this incredible technology that can never, ever, not even by a million years, be recreated by man. That mm-hmm. this, the, our body, and also just the something that we take for granted because we're doing it all the time, which is breathing. Yeah. But to actually utilize it in a conscious way, with an, in an intentional way, and how much it can actually significantly shift our life, it's like the answer is hitting in plain sight. Completely. Something that people often say as well with that is that when they do the five minute practice or the hour practice that we share, it's like your lenses get cleaned. Mm. And so when I'm talking about living in a trance state, I guess another way that we could put it is being focused on illusions, distortions, Mm. unhelpful ideas, stories, the past, like it all adds up to this foggy distorted lens Mm. of ourselves and the world and then when we do the practice and we shift our brain waves we start to experience clarity and then we're like oh it's right there mm. the answers are right there the solutions right there like I never even thought that I could go and connect with that person or do that thing because I was so caught up in this thick fog of of stories and limitation and then when you do the breathing it clears it out and then you get to go 
full power, full mm. steam ahead. Mm-mm. Oh, and by the way, um, to all of you watching this, uh, Hala will be sharing a uh, beautiful breathwork practice uh, for all of our Patreon members, yes. the VIP All Exclusive All Access Bluebird Pass Patreon. So if you want to sign up for that, you can. Um, link is somewhere. Chelsea. <laughs> you're like do it yeah yeah do Beep. it um and so this would be an amazing way to be able to incorporate these practices uh, into your everyday so um hello you are so much more multi-dimensional than just the single lens focus of breathwork even though breathwork is such a huge part of your offering you also have access to channeling interdimensional beings now, I know it's yes. like just lay it on the table. Just, there it is. Casual. <laughs> it's just casual on a Wednesday. Um, uh, Elizabeth April came on the podcast and I know that you're familiar with her and her teachings. And um, and uh, that was a very, very popular uh, podcast. And I, I always, there is always a part of me that thinks, you know, ooh, these are uh, the people that are going to be tuning in. Maybe they'll be like, oh, this is, this is pretty out there. You know, when you go, you go pretty out there, it, it can it like, get raise some eyebrows a little bit I think about this, the, the friends that I went to grew up in school with watching it you know and I'm like mm-hmm. interdimensional beings and channeling <laughs> like the Octarians I I'm saying <laughs> yeah like meh I lost my mind in LA um kind of <laughs> kind of energy however um I would love to hear about first and foremost your yeah your journey with how that even came into your field like how did this even become a narrative in your consciousness that this is even a thing? Mm-hmm. And then and then I'll ask the next question after that. So so how did this present itself? Because you pull on a lot of profound wisdom that is di- is very um, in tune. It's, it's an intuitive expression. Uh, and so was it breathwork that then led you to this conversation from these altered states of consciousness, or how did it how did it start in your life? Yeah, the channeling actually came way before breath work. So this is a funny little part of my life trajectory. Back in 2010, 2011, 2012, I was reading the self-help books, interested in the whole thing, flexing my law of attraction skills, all of that stuff. And I was really focused on using it to create success and purpose and uplevel my life in a more 3D way, I guess you could say. So I manifested a career in fashion styling and became quite successful quite quickly, going from not knowing what I wanted to do to being like, okay, what if I just use the law of attraction to create another reality for myself. So I decided, yep, fashion styling is what I want to do. That excites me. It feels creative. It feels big. It feels aspirational. So I went and did that and I kept on um, exploring, learning about spirituality and reading the books. And mostly I was reading Eckhart Tolle at the time and reading about Buddhism and that kind of thing. And then I had this niggling, dissatisfied, out of alignment feeling that fashion styling was something that I was doing for my ego. And I, I'd i gotten into it really, if I'm honest, to receive love and approval from my parents. Mm. And it's not that they wanted me to do that per se, but my parents are super creative and edgy and cool in their their way. And so our family was very much like creativity at the highest level is the peak. And so I thought, okay, well, if I do that, then, you know, I'll be loved, I'll be succeeding, I'll be approved of in my family's eyes. This was all playing out in the subconscious, by the way. So when I realized this, I made a scary, scary decision to step away from it. And to everyone's shock that I knew at the time, from friends to family to colleagues in the fashion industry, I decided to go and study hypnotherapy. Hmm. And I remember this dinner that I went to, like when it was very fresh and I was like, okay, building up my courage. And I sat down at a family dinner and I was like, 
yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to study hypnotherapy. And you know, when it, when a vision is fresh, it's, it's raw, it's vulnerable. If someone shits on you, it can hurt. Mm. And I remember at that table, my family, someone in my family saying, wait, what? So you're going to go from being a successful fashion stylist to being a hypnotist. And it was said with so much judgment Mm -hmm. and this heavy feeling just came over me like shame and like, oh, I'm a failure. But, but I did it anyway because it felt right deep down when I was alone, when no one else was around, when there was no judgments, that felt like the right thing to do. So fast forward to your, your question being answered. It was through hypnotherapy that I actually started um, opening up. So I learned self-hypnosis and I learned that through slowing down my brain waves, I could go into much deeper levels of meditation. And I fell in love with that. I was just like, oh, this is the funnest thing ever. I get to sit, I get to go from zero to a hundred in depth levels, you know, in seconds. And so at home, after I'd done my whole hypnotherapy training, I would just do it every day. Like it was my passion going into these deep, deep theta brainwave states and just exploring the vast space. So one day when I was sitting in this meditation, exploring the vast space, what up until that point had been empty, relaxed, vast space changed. And I felt myself going into what I would now describe as another dimension. And it was a vast space. And then in front of me, in my mind's eye, there was this blue light way out in the distance. And I just remember feeling just totally compelled to go toward it. And then as the blue light got closer, it turned into a being. And this was not me being like, okay, picture your spirit guide coming toward you. No, this was happening to me. Like I was just receiving what was unfolding moment to moment. So then this being came close and it was like an old man type figure, very Dumbledore, (laughs) Gandalf style, but like emanating blue light out of its entire being. And randomly in that moment, I recalled some YouTube thing that I'd heard about spirit guides visiting that said, if you get visited by a being, ask, is this your true form? So in that moment, that was what I did. (laughs) And I said, is this your true form? And then this being who said, by the way, that he was my guide and that he was from Arcturus, which I've, I'd never heard of up until that point, he then said no. And he shape-shifted into a small kind of child size alien. And he explained to me that I have been connected in with the Arcturians since before this lifetime and that I'm here to be a voice for not just the Arcturians, but many galactic races and higher consciousness to help establish that as a way of being on earth. So that's where it began. And I came out of that experience and I, I remember Lucas was at the house and I was like, something really weird just happened. Like, what the heck? I don't know what, what this was. And I was like, Arcturus, like, what, what is that? So as you do, I got on Google and I'm trying to spell it. Like, I don't know how to spell the words and what Arcturians are. And if this is even a thing that I can find out about. And I just started finding information that was validating what happened. And then what's kind of wild and powerful is from that day onward on cue, I could sit down with a book and just start writing from, um, I could start writing messages from the Arcturians. And so 
a few weeks after that contact experience happened, Lucas and I inherited money from a distant relative who passed away. And randomly we got a call that we'd inherited money. So we sold everything that we had except for like a tiny backpack each. And we went to India. And so at this time, you know, when everyone was like, is the world going to end like 21st, 12, 2012, Lucas and I were living in Goa in India. And I was just channeling every day about the Ascension timeline and the future of humanity and downloading instructions on what to do to support humanity. And um, I didn't tell anyone mm. because of exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So I, I wrote books and books worth, like journals and journals filled with channeling for several years after that. And I didn't tell anybody because I was worried that people would think that I was making it up, that I was crazy. Like it, this is the weird thing is even I was like, is it possible that I'm making this up? Like, is it possible that this is coming from my imagination? Mm. But whenever I connect in, it's undeniable that it does not feel like me. And these beings consistently tell me that their interest is not in making it about them. Their interest is purely in helping us as a species. And so I take what I receive and I'm here to pass it on. And I don't see it as a party trick or a, like a fun, entertaining thing. And I'm definitely not here to do it for attention reasons. But if I can help someone through bringing messages to them, then I'm going to do that. And another layer of this too is that I know that there are millions of people around the world who question if we are alone in the cosmos. And I think it's really fucked up and unfair that asking questions like that feels so taboo mm. and causes us to question our sanity when I personally, if I'm really objective and honest about it, I think it's kind of fucked up not to ask those questions. Mm. Like science tells us that the cosmos is so vast. You know, we, we exist in one planet in a universe of many, many multiverses. And to think that we're alone, it's a pretty limited and small thinking. Mm -hmm. Just by you even speaking into that, uh, with, with saying that this is this is something that that could be a normal conversation, but the way that our society is set up is to ostracize anybody that thinks slightly different, mm -hmm. and so we're essentially like policing ourselves um, because we we judge each other and we keep each other small in this space. And yet, I I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone come to me, whether they're a client or whether they're just a friend or somebody in passing that I even drop on a conversation of being like, "Am I going crazy?" Mm. Because anything outside of the cycle of wake up, eat breakfast or wake up, exercise, eat breakfast, go to work, come back, watch Netflix, go to sleep, repeat, yeah. uh, is, is, can be deemed as crazy, can be, te can be deemed as like so far out there. And with all this, also with all the religious programming, um, and so many different programs that are, are run in, um, in our society, having a conversation of a narrative around life beings outside of the physical realm um, is ostracized mm. and placed as weird. And essentially we are so judgmental of, our, of ourselves around this experience that we don't let they have an outlet for it. But what happens is when, when an insight comes in and there isn't an outlet for it, it eats us from the inside out. It needs to get out. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to be shared ultimately, at least with ourselves or our, our closest people that we, we are connected with. So I'm curious, what was the, what was the shift that happened for you around, okay, I have all of these books and I have all of these journals and this is what's happening for me to now being able to sit on this podcast mm -hmm. and be like, yeah, and I have a conversation with these beings and be able to like completely be in your composure and have your spine straight and be clear on your words and be able to deliver it. There's got to be a journey between your time in Goa and where you're at right now. Mm. 
Yeah, there has been such a journey and I think it's still, it's still unfolding. My courage muscles are still building. It still feels scary. There's so many moments where I go to share something and I'm like, ah, maybe I shouldn't. They might think I'm weird or Mm. is it too much or are they ready for it? And that, yeah, that's a process that I'm gradually getting more and more comfortable with, uh, you know, just being myself really. And so what it comes down to is self-love because the part of me that doesn't want to share and that holds back is the part of me that is trying to control and manage my reality based on other people's reactions Mm. or state of consciousness or readiness. But if I love myself fully and I trust myself and I can be with the the purity of my intentions, then I would have my own back and I'd go all the way in. I actually, this is reminding me of a powerful epiphany moment that I had last year. I was, I was just, you know, microdosing some shrooms (laughs) as you do. And I was in the kitchen and I saw in front of me, I guess, in again, in my mind's eye, but it was like I had my eyes open and I could feel deeply this vision of myself as a child standing in front of me. And it felt like I was my own mother. Mm-hmm. It kind of felt like, you know, being in the kitchen with your daughter and being like, all right, sweetheart, you know, this is what we're doing. And I saw myself as a little child dancing and playing and then saying, something along the lines of like, I, I want, I want to share this and I, and this is who I am. And I'm going to go out and talk about extraterrestrials. And that's my future mum. It was like this tripped out multidimensional moment. And in that moment there, as I saw myself in the eyes of a mother to myself, I was so proud like deeply moved and proud and was like, of course you're going to, that's who you are. Like you are, you are the shit Mm. and you're my hero Mm. and I'm so proud of you and and you're going to do that and know that I believe in you and I've got your back 100%. Mm. And it really made me think in that moment, whoa, if I had a daughter, I would be, full out unwavering in my encouragement of her just being cosmic and and whatever she wanted to be and sharing the truth boldly you know boldly and unapologetically knowing that she was a part of a new wave of change and so it's up to me now to mother myself Mm. to be that knowing that in a hundred years to come or 500 years to come or however the fuck long it takes. I will be glad I did that. Mm. To be one of the brave ones who didn't wait for validation and permission and for it to be normal Mm. to step forward and go, yeah, this is, this is my experience. Mm. That's powerful. Last medicine. So if there's somebody listening to this podcast and they're like, you know, driving in their car and they're like, oh, there's this thing that I have that I have connection to or I'm connecting with uh, different beings that show their face in, in my dreams or I'm, I'm receiving guidance or I'm receiving this wisdom that's coming through or there's something in me that I am afraid to share it. Mm-hmm. If you were to give some advice or some guidance, what would you say? Oh, I got to check in with that. I would say you know the truth by the way it feels. Mm -hmm. And if it feels like truth, it's worth paying attention to. And 
and having the courage to live your truth is a process. So don't expect yourself to go from being like in the closet, hidden around new experiences that are unfolding in your life to fully outspoken and being an advocate for these things. I think it's a journey and it's a journey for good reason. Like you were saying about integration with say ayahuasca or doing 5-MeO DMT, like you tap into the truth and then you give it time to take roots in your being, to understand it, to explore it, to feel it, to trust it, to learn how to navigate that new realm that's being revealed to you. And from there, share it, share it with people who feel safe and then share it a little bolder and a little bolder after that. And you'll be shown. And this is another part of it is like, I don't believe that our intuition is designed to reveal the whole timeline immediately. It's a process. And so you might not know where it's going, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pay attention to what you do know. Mm -hmm. So if you act on that and trust that and keep moving with that, you'll be guided in the right direction. Like I've got no idea how my life's going to unfold. Mm. And I know you as well and really everyone, we can know certain things, but there is no way of predicting how it's actually all going to happen. Mm. And that's the fun of it. That's why we're all here having this experience is we get to be in the mystery of source being made manifest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's powerful. It's uh, it's being a complete piece of life's inherent uncertainty, Richard Rudd. Said yes. that. The mm-hmm. complete piece of life's inherent uncertainty while simultaneously a deeper claiming of what is and what feels alive based off of the feeling. In a in a vibratory reality, in a, in, a, in everything is a vibration. And there are so many misinterpretations of the truth of what it means to be human and the capacity of the human potential while simultaneously as we flow on this massive rock. Mm hurling through space at millions of miles an hour, <laughs> held in torpor by a huge ball of fire. Just meditate on that one. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot more going on than what we can even preconceive. And I just want to give you uh, acknowledgement to you for a deeper claiming because ultimately the people that will think it's weird or think it's taboo or think it's a bit out there will naturally by nature fall away. Mm. And then the ones that really can see you and really hold you in this and encourage you to continue to strengthen that muscle of trusting your channel are going to be the ones that you're going to want to keep around regardless. As Mm. these people fall away, so does also the people please energy get alchemized as you deepen your level of self-love and acceptance around what is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's so many children and there's so many uh, humans now that are growing up on this planet that have these gifts, but just don't have the right frame and don't have people around it that will encourage this and will think it's weird and be teased for it. And then it turns in on itself and it eats away at our self-worth to a point where we're like, what is it even, what's the even point of being alive? Yeah. That, that's a, such a, a huge truth right there that fuels me as well. It breaks my heart when I see people, whether it's walking down the street or online, who I know are so sensitive and gifted and society might put them in the box of being a weirdo or an outcast, but they're just deep feeling. Their brains are operating differently. Maybe it's more creatively quirky. Maybe they're asking different questions. Maybe they're socially awkward because they feel so much or they don't don't relate to the way that a certain type of people or level of consciousness or age group are operating. And that's not easy. And so when I see people who are like dealing with depression or anxiety or withdrawing, Mm. that motivates me as well Mm. more than anything else. Along with the self-love, it's the love of those people to be a voice because that's me. Like I am that person. I am am them. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the ones who's like, ah, no one understands me. Like I'm a weirdo. Shout out to all the weirdos. You're the shit. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ultimately the permission slip that is oozing from this podcast around uh, um, 
liberation, waving the freak flag full permission and scribbling as, as much as possible outside of the lines with as many colors as possible uh, without needing to label, define, judge or even necessarily have the answers to or understand. Um, there have been moments in my life where I have experienced um, like moments of channeling and it's like like a very weird state that I almost kind of brushed off as like a dream state or like, did that even happen? And not communicating with it, but also recognizing that my power lies in those states and the vulnerability that it takes to even express that to somebody else and the courage that it takes. And yet the reward of truly coming home into oneself and navigating this reality from a sense of, I know who I am. I know why I'm here and I know how I serve is on the other side of the deeper claiming, which takes the courage to allow ourselves to be in what is without the judgment. Yes. And I feel like that is the next wave of what it means to be human is like, as we see with, um, you know, uh, the, the, the movement with the gender now and how it's going in in non-binary and it's, and it's like, I am a they and, and, and being associated as a they, for me, that represents the direction we're moving in, which is so far beyond labels and normal and woman, man, woman, marries man, man now owns woman, (laughs) like that kind of construct Mm -hmm. moving into a place of, um, Uh, there are no boxes and therefore it feels like it's a realm where we become limitless, Mm -hmm. which is actually our birthright and our natural state. Yes, absolutely. That is how, that is how evolution continues is by continuing to open to new ideas and having the courage to lead. That's, that is what it takes to be a leader is to step forward and do the things that have previously been considered unacceptable or unknown or unsafe or taboo. And then time goes on, the tipping point starts to happen where the leaders and then, the, you know, you know, I mean, you can look it up, Google it, the leaders, the early adopters, and then it starts to trickle out and then it's accepted as normal. And then we're like, oh, what? Hasn't it always been like that? No, no, it has not always been like that. And so that's just going to keep happening. Mm-hmm. And that's really where I believe the gap gets bridged between what we could think of as these uh, higher consciousness civilizations and where we are now. They represent the future of what we can also be, mm-hmm. which is limitless, more fluid in our expression, mm-hmm. our form, our ideas, mm-hmm. our ability to love. Mm. Have you ever experienced pioneer syndrome? And what I mean by that is um, a pioneer, a visionary, someone that sees a vision for the for the greater future in the direction that we're moving in as opposed to just accepting it. It's just the way that it is. And this is you shut up and you take a number and you fall in line and you just accept it. Um, but to actually be a visionary of the direction we can move in of like allowing ourselves to anger heaven on earth and it to actually be a timeline within our lifetime. Mm-hmm. To be somebody that is so forward thinking and is to be so connected to the cosmos and to be really anchoring it in, pioneer syndrome can also be a loneliness of feeling like um, uh, nobody really gets me or like in my family or um, being ostracized by many people or judged by many people or laughed at by many people because we judge what we don't understand. Have you ever experienced that? My entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously, since I was a, a small child, I have always felt that. Mm. It's exhausting at times. And when I try to fit in, which I have done a lot, I feel like I'm abandoning myself and betraying myself. So it's a trade-off to be loved by others and accepted by others in the established construct of what is and to feel safe in that, but to feel out of alignment with self or to trust that I have an immense unseen support and I am who I am for a reason and that there's divine grace that is working through 
every cell of my being, every thought that I have. And that by being who I am, I'll open many more doors and help many more people. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to journey through discomfort and aloneness at times in that process. That's been the battle, the conflict. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is there's a good, there's a good ending. There's a good (laughs) ending, fam, on this one. The more I choose to be myself and the more consciousness is rising on the planet, if we want to call it that, people are waking up, becoming more open-minded, accepting, blah, 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 blah. The more I attract people like me, Mm. like you. And then I don't feel so alone. Mm. And I actually had to go through the hard bit of feeling alone, losing all my friends, having people talking shit about me behind my back, having family judge me letting go of a career, like not having money, having people think I'd gone off the fucking deep end. Even to this day, still having a lot of friends and people around me who aren't open to everything I believe. Like it's all been worth it because the moments where I get to just fully express and or express aspects of myself in different settings, that's where I feel most alive and most free and most like, you're doing it. You're really doing it. Like you're being who you came here to be. Mm. Mm. It's so powerful. And then the service is born from that place. And in that yeah. service, I find that the more people we touch through inspiration, through the quantum field, which is the interconnected nature of the human experience of how we are all interconnected. If you impact somebody in a positive way, if they make one degree shift to the right, that is more in alignment with who they were today than they were yesterday because of something that you shared or inspired them through, then that does by nature have to return to its place of origin. Mm. So the more people you start inspiring, the more people you activate from that truth that is born on the other side of the death process of the false illusion of who you think you are, then that starts feeding you mentally, physically, spiritually, Mm -hmm. financially, sexually, multidimensionally on all planes of existence so that you can actually continue to be of service with much more ease and grace. Mm -hmm. So it feeds its place of origin. And according to the Akashic records, it's like, or the, the law of karma, anything that's put out, everything has to, by the law of karma, return to its place of origin. So true. So for example, if you did, you did a a podcast and there's 10 people that tune into this podcast that go, oh my gosh, I'm so inspired by everything that she said. I'm actually going to have the courage to leave my job that's draining me um, for for, for following my feeling. Thank you, Hella. And they're in Tokyo. Mm. But that goes (laughs) out into the quantum and you're now in LA at the coffee shop. And all of a sudden, somebody goes, I'm going to pay it forward. It's directly linked to that person Mm. on the other side of the planet. That is legacy. And it creates a spider web. It's like an interconnected nature of inspiration, Mm -hmm. of recognizing that it it can't be just about you. It's going to take a whole light army of millions of people. Yeah. However, because you had the courage to let it come through you and be seen in a place of, of the danger zone, which is to be ostracized um, as being different, you are generous, genuinely rewarded by the universe, not only in Soul Tribe showing up and continuing to reinforce that you're on the right track, but also simultaneously being provo- provided and supported for by the universe mm-hmm. for your courage. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. And something that is so sweet And I suppose in one way it's sweet to the ego, sweet to the the mind and sweet to the parts that have felt rejected, but also sweet to the soul. You know, my, my truth is that as years go on, what I've seen is that a lot of the people who initially have not been on board with my direction have come back around. Oftentimes it's through really difficult circumstances. Like I've had multiple people in my life who have had near death experiences, accidents, all kinds of wild things. And in those moments of deep confrontation and the shift in perspective, right? Like, you know, when you get sick or you have an accident or something really full on happens, you reevaluate everything and quickly it becomes obvious what actually matters 
and what you really need in order to support yourself through that or like to soothe the parts of you that went through that. And so, yeah, what I've found is that in those experiences, people have reached out to me out of the woodwork. Sometimes people who I haven't spoken to in five, 10 years who were like, you are the first person I thought of after this thing happened to me and I knew you could help me. Mm. And I'm sorry for any time I ever made you feel like you were going off the deep end or Mm. that what you were doing isn't valid. And now I'm ready. I want to, I want to learn. Truth, truth will always come to the surface and love, Mm -hmm. love will always be the final piece. No matter where we, where we did journey in this life, love will always be the thing that it circles back to. Yeah. Um, wow, this is really powerful. And I feel, I can just feel into the relatability of the bluebirds just tuning in and, um, resonating because ultimately we all have our own uniqueness and, and our own truth. And I always like to say that our uniqueness is our power and you just showing up today and sharing your story and sharing your journey allows a permission slip for anybody tuning in to be like, yeah, I got that thing too. And it may not be channeling. It may not be, you know, breath work or tapping into the cosmos and channeling Australians and books and goer. However, there is a unique thing in every single person otherwise they wouldn't be on this planet yep if it's creating a fashion label Mm -hmm. or supporting someone in their their empire or making a food business or like whatever the thing is we all play our role in making this world a better place and no matter what it is whether it's something that is creatively challenging and vulnerable for you or spiritually or Mm -hmm. sexually vulnerable It all is, it's universal truth that when you do what feels right for you and you follow that inner calling, you will feel more free and you will make a much greater impact than trying to upkeep the norms that have been. Mm. Wow. This is powerful. And such an amazing conversation, Ella. Um, Thank you, 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 thank you for for being here and for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and just allowing me to bask in your epicness. If people are just really resonating with this and just really resonating with who you be and what you share and awaken and what you're creating with the awaken and the breath work um, with with uh, Lucas, how can people follow you? How can people can tune in to uh, what it is that you're creating? Well, we are most active on Instagram in this day mm-hmm. of recording. Yeah. <laughs> Next week, there's a new platform that's released. I mean, I'm, there, there isn't that I know of, but uh-huh. you know what it's like. Yeah, yeah. Times change. Instagram <laughs> currently is a good place to connect with us. You can go to our breathwork website, Awaken with an O, awaken.com, or my website, hellawestern.com. Yeah, find us. And what's your Instagram with handle? Us. Hella, H-E-L-L-E underscore Weston, W-E-S-T-O-N. And that will all be in the show notes yeah. if you want to check it out. Um, okay, I want to leave it with one final question. Mm-hmm. If I was to give you a microphone just like this and you had a couple of minutes to share a message to humanity... And it was about to be broadcasted to the whole world. <gasps> what would you say? <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Okay. Mm-hmm. What would I say? In order to become who you've always known yourself to be, you will need to release who you think you are. Who you think you are is a culmination of layers of programming that weave together programming not just of your own lifetime but of generations before you. that span the dimensions of time and space and beyond it. And if you are to become who you are destined to become, it will require you to trust in something beyond the known, beyond what you're told, 
beyond what you can see, beyond what you can learn outside of yourself. And so the greatest gift that you can give not only yourself, but source, creation, which desires to be made manifest through your lifetime, is to seek inwardly, pay attention, make a plan, be willing to pivot, And then commit with unwavering faith to the action required to express what you find in physical form. And so it is, and it is so... That was incredible. Holy shit. I'm going to have to recap on this episode and make some notes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your beauty. Thank you for your wisdom. It's such an honor, such an honor to have you on, on Deja Vu podcast. And uh, for all of you blue birds listening at home, watching at home, wherever you are, definitely go follow Hella. Um, follow her magic. She definitely will bring you that uh, little daily doses on her Instagram stories of reminding you to consciously breathe and set your intentions as well as many other beautiful boss ass bitch that she, stuff that she's doing, which is just epic. <laughs> boss, ass, <laughs> boss ass bitch. Um, and um, if you resonate with this podcast and you're feeling like, yeah, this is something that I really want to share and I find like a piece of me within this podcast, then share it on your Instagram stories, um, blast it out. We can only reach so many people with our platforms. However, with all the bluebirds come together and we utilize this platform or your platform to be able to share the message, we can get a message out further and wider. And so feel free to share it. Also, if you want to tune into the breathwork exercise that Hella um, is going to be sharing after this, after we close it out in the more exclusive, backstage access pass over on the Patreon as well as many other videos that I release uh, that do not make it to the internet and I like the Patreon page because it's an opportunity to really be able to just unravel and be deep in that place of authenticity and that truth without any you know fears of how it's being perceived because it's such a beautiful tight close container of like-minded individuals that are fully committed every single penny that comes into the Patreon uh, goes directly to funding Deja podcast and continuing to be able to up level the equipment to up level the surrounding and to up level the content that gets blasted out to the masses through this platform so thank you thank you thank you once again so grateful so grateful thank you so much for having me i love you and i just have to say like little last add-on that (laughs) if anybody is here who doesn't no blue beyond this episode please go and watch the rest of them listen to the rest of them mm-hmm. because you are one of my favorite people on the planet mm-hmm. and in the cosmos <laughs> and i learn so much from you and your integrity is so high and your depth is boundless so if there's anyone that i would say is that is a must to follow and learn from it's also you oh saying that yeah like we're we all in the fields <laughs> it's the truth <laughs> oh all right well what she said all right fam <laughs> <We're>. <laughs> blast 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 sending you so much love and so much power and recognizing that you have everything within you and all you have to do is turn within and give yourself the permission to feel it all sending so much love and so much appreciation until next episode blast blast blast